youth. Big subject. Mayaki also mentioned it in his speech. He always does. Why do you think it is important to speak about that subject? It goes beyond the political interest. It's about how to make sure that the 440 million youth which will be entering the labor market by 2030 get an opportunity to have a better life. With a job creation of about 3 million new jobs per year, we won't be able to absorb this cohort of 20 million youth a year. So this is why we need to stand up to see what could we do jointly together to address this issue of uh, youth unemployment. What do you think could SNRD do to incorporate more youth? The priorities for the youth need to be defined by the youth themselves. So having an inclusive approach, having the youth in the policy design process will be one uh, uh, key step in the right direction. So we need to get to promote the dialogue with the private sector to know what are the needs of skills uh, so that we can go back and see how can we address uh, uh, the offer of training in these uh, specific areas. 68% of the income of rural household is created in the agricultural sector. So, and 23% uh, of the income are coming from the off-farm sector. So we need to work on all these different levels not focusing only on one, and one shot uh, uh, won't help us to solve the problem. We need to diversify our action, looking at various sectors. Uh, developing the skills doesn't, doesn't mean that you are creating jobs. You are creating an enabling environment, but the creation of a job will come from the private sector. So we need also to make sure that we promote domestic private sector, we enable them to get the right uh, knowledge, capital they, they need to establish their business. I find it a little bit difficult when I speak to youth in agriculture. They try to promote and level up the image agriculture has. And part of that image is to make it more modern and more appealing. Don't you see there's a, maybe a contradiction between low-skilled, un, unskilled labor you know, use that as a sponge to actually go in there? Uh, your point is very valid, but only if you look at agriculture the way it is done, it has been done in the past and the way it is done today. I think uh, for the agricultural sector to be um, attractive, you need to make sure that uh, the instrument you use does not refer to the rudimentary instrument the, uh, our parents or our grandparents were using. Uh, there is a lot of innovation we can bring in agriculture. There is a lot of uh, ICT tools who can enable uh, young farmers to do business differently. And uh, they, they, they can have information on, on, on market, on, on, on their cell phone, uh, they, they know uh, how the weather will look like uh, uh, in one week period and uh, they know what are the, the, the agricultural product the, the market uh, uh, are looking for and they know where to find this market, they know the evolution of the price on this market. So they en this enable them to, to, to make the right decision and also the technologies they are using to produce eh, is helping them to, to increase their productivity. and. More interesting, they are not limiting themselves just on the production level. They are looking at the entire food economy, meaning at the processing and also the marketing aspect. So I think if you take the, the agriculture from this value chain perspective, you will see that it's totally another idea of agriculture compared to the way uh, their, their, their parents uh, used, to, uh, used to work in the sector. For these people to do all these things, go check online what the weather is, you need to have some skills. And that's maybe the point. Where does the finance, the capacity development come into that area to get those unskilled people f 
find interest in the agriculture sector, move in, get the skills to use these sort of things? Yes, uh, I think for the skills uh, promotion, uh, I see a key role of the private sector. Because as I, as I was saying, the creation of job will come, is, will come ultimately from the private sector. So the private sector needs also to be involved in the capacity development because this is one which, what, which is going to benefit them. If they invest in this capacity, they will have the skills they are looking for and then the productivity of a company will increase. They will have high skills, uh, uh, manpower, and they will be able, even in terms of return, to increase their investment. Climate change obviously is a bit more of a daunting uh, subject because you can't really avoid the climate change anymore, I guess. Um, there's a lot of initiative. Maybe you can go a little bit into what kind of initiative there is. Um, and maybe, if I can hint a little bit, I think climate change has a lot to do also with the change of behavior by people to adjust. You can't just adjust the agriculture. People also need to eat different food, prepare it differently. Is there room for, uh, for improvement, more activity in this area? Climate change is one of the key factors. So I think uh, we need to adjust. We need more innovation. We need to have to develop technologies which are climate resilient. We need also to have a, a behavior change because we are in a new context. We are facing new challenge and we need to adjust to this new context. And uh, uh, with a national determined contribution uh, coming from the Paris Agreement and which will be implemented at country level by the, uh, our partner countries, uh, I think we, uh, we are better positioned to support this process, to bring together the agriculture sector and the climate change sector to see it, and the environment sector and to see what could we do from both sides to make sure that uh, we develop a very resilient uh, approach to increase um, our adaptability to this new pattern and also make sure that um, uh, the type of innovation we bring in is adapted to the need of the people on the ground. One of our potential in SNAD, which we are not being using fully, is also our national personnel. I think uh, there is a huge uh, value, uh, value in the national personnel, which we can better use by involving them more. I think uh, we have tried to do better than it was, but there is still room for improvement. And also, um, very importantly for me, is um, how can we use the knowledge we are generating in this set of network to influence also the decision-making process in our company. I think uh, this bottom-up approach, for me, provides uh, evidence which are sometimes required at headquarter level to make sound, uh, uh, to take sound, sound decision. And uh, I see ourselves as one of the um, main knowledge piece in our company. And uh, I was very happy to hear from our management coming from headquarters that they value uh, the contribution of sector network like ours. And I hope that will take uh, advantage of this uh, offer they are making and use it to shape the way we also we, uh, we, we, we proceed with our adversary services to our partner countries.